correct me if you heard this, if you haven't heard this before, sorry. You can drive into any neighborhood in America where people are making less than a hundred thousand and they're driving vehicles where name brand big houses. Let me look at the let me oh yeah, big houses yeah. to uh um, four thousand square foot houses. Yeah, and uh to make it look like they are rich. And today, today, that's what we're gonna talk about. The middle class, the middle class and the lower class believe that money is to give the illusion that you're rich. With all that being said, Alex, take it off. Yep, this is very common. Um hey, you see it all the time. I mean, like the house thing is one for me too, like you know, seeing Two people, the kids are already grown up, you know, it's just, you know, just a mom and a dad, you know, married couple living in a 3000 square foot house. And I've heard I've heard of it before. I mean, it's and it's it's different when like um, if if you are wealthy, super wealthy, if that's what you want, a big house, then OK. But for people making, like you said, less than six figures, not talking about people making millions or whatever then why do you need all that space and yet you know maybe you're you know you're talking about money being tight and things like that you know people they will cut out their needs as we've talked about before before cutting out their wants so right and that in that situation you just gave a three thousand square foot house and it's only two people in the house and then you won't hear the pushback from people to say one you can't tell me how to spend my money yeah, we can't. They're going to say, oh, what about when people come visit? And my rebuttal to that always is, so you're paying two, two $3,000 a month for the possibility of people coming to visit. Why not? Why not save that two or $3,000 extra a month that you're paying for these vacant rooms, hoping somebody come visit you? And just get them a hotel for when they come visit you. But people, they have this whole illusion of, oh, I have, you know, two guest rooms now. So when people come, then you audit, you know, audit the last couple of years. How many people came to visit you? Oh, well, none. But it's there just in case. <laughs> but you're, you have, you have financial issues, but I just, you know, pointed out a big, you know, financial liability in your house just to say, Oh, I have I have guest rooms. So sorry to cut you off, but I just had to point. No, that it's out. okay. No, it's, yeah, I, I and I see it too. I mean, it's pretty common if you're in a, you know, especially around like the suburbs. Um, you'll see like these two story houses. I mean, my neighbor, two story house, and they have like one kid with them, five bedrooms, three people. You know. Probably only using two bedrooms, three are spare. So you see it a lot, and um, but then they gotta have like the BMWs, Mercedes. Some get Jaguars. Some get the uh, I'm not good with car names. What's that? Uh, um, uh, oh my goodness, uh, Maseratis. I've seen that. You know, just yeah. So you know, and they, but then at the end of the day, like they're complaining about finances and you know especially i mean there there will always be some way they're bickering about finances i've seen people that they look like they have a great life but then they'll talk about something where like oh i had a you know my kids just wanted to go on this trip and you know we just paid it but like you could tell they didn't want to pay it and they're just the way they're talking about it and it's like you know you have all these uh, liabilities that you have to pay for. I mean, it's crazy. You you can look on the internet today, and it shows fifty four percent. The number is probably higher now. Fifty four percent of Americans can't even afford a thousand dollar emergency. But but they can't afford a thousand dollar emergency. But they can afford. But they pay it. I ain't gonna say they can afford. But they pay a thousand dollar a month car payment. 
How how to make that make sense? You can't afford a thousand dollar emergency, but you got direct TV with all the sports packages paying three, four hundred dollars a month. And the thing is, and it's not just the, the middle class, and I don't even want to say middle class, because the number, the number that you know classified middle class, the people with I'm gonna say people with a poor mindset. People with a poor mindset, no matter if you make $100,000, if you make $100,000 and you spend $100,000 or you spend $110,000, you're still poor. They just have a poor mindset. But, I mean, and you see it cascade. And, you know, until you start dealing with people that understand what wealth is, you know, or you just got that frugal, you know, grandfather that, you know, instilled it in you, grandma that instilled it in you. A lot of people and in 50, just think 54, I mean, 54 percent of people in the United States can't afford a thousand dollar emergency. So that's more than just, you know, that middle class, middle class ain't that. I mean, ain't that big. We're talking about the lower classes. We're talking about people that's making three, four hundred thousand dollars a month, but they blowing five hundred thousand dollars a month. Credit card bills up the wazoo and things like that. But even going to, you know, the uh, lower income scale. You can go to any quote unquote hood or. And I'm not saying as an urban thing, but, you know, what they call it, trailer park, whatever, whatever they think that's, you know, low income. You can go anywhere and you see people struggling, but you see the coach, you see the Fendi, you see the Jordans, you see all these people. Like, I remember seeing a lady a while back. She said, yeah, I can't afford my light bill. And in the same breath, I had to buy my son's school shoes. Now, the kids need school shoes, yeah. But he came in with a pair of $280 pair of Michael Jordan's on. The shoes probably cost more than where they were staying. <laughs> but you paid $280 for some Jordans. What was you trying to, what message would you try to convey here? Here, here, son, you should buy a $280 pair of Jordans before. You pay your utilities. What message was you trying to convey to the people around you? Oh, I can afford $200, a $280 pair of drawers to the same people in your neighborhood and y'all in the same economic condition. So you're saying that, oh, we're all broke, but I'm just not as broke as you. What message can you actually convey by spending all that money knowing everybody's struggling? And, and it's not just one person doing it. Everybody's doing it. Everybody got the, you know, you see the, the Fendi's, the Gucci glasses, Gucci loafers. I mean, you might hear some people in the comments say, well, well, it's probably fake. No, this is what they're spending their tax returns on. They, they want one piece of luxury to make it feel like they made it. But you bring that one piece of luxury into the same neighborhood where you might get knocked over the head and somebody going to take it from you in the same week. Just to show people, hey, I made it. But everybody know, oh yeah, she got her tax return. Oh yeah, yeah, he got a sugar mama somewhere. But you're still in the same condition that you was before. So that's that's uh that's one of that still and, and I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm holier than thou. Uh me growing up, I wasn't in the, the best neighborhood, but my mom had the fortitude to not not have us in the name brand stuff, but I seen it. And was I, when I was younger, was I envious of the kids that had the name brand? Yeah. But as I got older, it made sense. Like, what, what does that do? They don't do it. We still all broke together. We still knocking on each other's door to borrow sugar and bread. So just because you got a pair of drawers, that don't mean you got money in. But just want to cast out that image and that illusion that you have money when we all suffer and you're not really putting yourself in a in a better position, you just the envy of others and you make yourself a target. And that's all I got on that particular that, subject right there. That's one of the funniest ones uh for me, living life and you say it all the time. If I have the money to buy that stuff and I don't, but you do and you don't have the money, then who's the smarter person? Sure. And you sure. I mean you see it all the time too, like and I'm sure you get recommendations from people. Oh, why don't you, you should go and buy this or go buy that. Like for what? I mean, it doesn't, 
at the end of the day it doesn't matter this, like with shoes like shoot we were uh shoe shopping the other day uh me and my wife and i was like man these are 80 bucks i was like i was like no i was like no i was like you find it right now no I walked out with nothing. I was like, man, you find a $20 pair, we'll get them. <laughs> like, yeah, you're like, uh, let's just tape up these cards. Let's just tape up the shoe boxes and make it happen. <laughs> I was like, dude, no, 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 can't do it. <laughs> man, yeah. But- yeah. And no, and, and, and you're right. I always get recommendations of people trying to tell me. Now, they, they never, of course, I question information. Wait, you don't have no money and you're trying to tell me what to do. I don't. Me, my philosophy, and people in the audience, you can adapt this philosophy if you want to. I do not, and I don't care what the subject is, I do not take advice from people on any subject that people didn't have success in. So I'll just give you a couple examples. I won't take marriage advice from somebody who wasn't successful in marriage. I won't take financial advice for somebody that's living paycheck to paycheck or asking people to pay the electricity bill. It don't matter what it, I won't take business advice from somebody who never ran a business. Even dieting. just like I won't take stock, just like I won't take stock advice from somebody who don't own stocks. Uh, I only take advice from people that's doing it. That's in the action doing it. Not somebody who did it 50 years and oh yeah, 50 years ago I made a lot of money. So it's either, but what you doing now? Oh no, I'm not doing nothing now. So you either got lucky with what you did or you didn't have something that was sustainable however you got it. That's how I look at it. I only get advice from now you know, people that, you know, what's successful at. The only other way I take advice is anything somebody that was successful tell me, I do the exact opposite. When I say exact, exact opposite. If they say, go down the street, make a right at the next block, make a left to get to success, I will go down the block, make a left and not a right. And then I might even double back just to make sure they weren't tricking. That's just how I am when it comes to advice. I do the exact opposite of what they're doing. No matter what the subject is, I'll do the exact opposite. I mean, the only time, the only time I'll I will I'll think about something they say, if they said something off their head that they didn't, they didn't think that was smart. But I don't, that's exactly how my advice go. And like you said, I always say that to people. I can afford something. You can't. You're buying it. So which one of us is wrong? And I and I always got throw in. I'm not as cheap as I people. I always got throw that in there. But, <laughs> you know, it, don't, it just don't make sense. It just don't make sense. No, absolutely. And it, I mean, like you said, it goes for anything, even fitness and you know any any subject matter. If they're if they're not successful, and I and we were having a conversation earlier, but you know, there's people that will say the right thing, but they're not doing it. And, yeah. you know, it's, you know, a lot of people, like you said, think that just knowing about the subject is enough, but it's putting in the work. But with yeah. all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, share, uh, leave a comment, and we'll see you guys in the next video.